Progressive War Room, I really, my passion with this show is to demystify running for office. I want you to know that anybody can do it and I want to really dig into that process, how that is. So the first question I have, what is the process for building a campaign team? So you're the perfect person to ask this as a candidate. And then how hard is it to get volunteers? First thing is uh, we know that regular people are not meant to run. We know that the, that the resources that are out there are already um, in line with a lot of the established uh, organizations, and they're also in line with the Democratic and the Republican establishment uh, and the big money influence. So how does a regular person who has no connections to that world run? Mm -hmm. And um, the, the simplest way that I can tell you is first, be sure of the position that you want to run for. Educate yourself as much as you can about what that role is going to take mm -hmm. and what you need to know to actually fulfill those, that position as, as best as you can. Mm -hmm. um, because you need to know exactly what you're going to do to make that situation better, what you can actually promise. Uh, you can't be running for city council and talking about signing a, a, an accord, a peace accord with Israel when you have no power in doing something like that. So mm -hmm. um, knowing exactly what your position is going to be able to do is the first thing you need to, to educate yourself on. Uh, secondly, look out for organizations like ours that we are supporting people um, running from school board all the way to the U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. So there's not very many of us out there that are going to help you at every level of office. Uh, most major organizations will only endorse candidates for Congress or the Senate. Um, mm -hmm. So look for organizations that are new or, or maybe some that you may not even have heard of. There are also a lot of candidate training um organizations like you have Emerge, mm -hmm. which is a big one that can kind of give you a, a guide on how to run. Nice. Uh, that's something that we're also going to be trying to do in the future is hold uh, a candidate training session so that we can talk to you about how to file, how to get your first campaign manager, how to get your first volunteer. Um, because for a lot of us, it's going to be a long time, if at all, before you can actually hire somebody, especially in, in smaller races like uh, the school board, where mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't think that it makes that much of an impact in their life, but they're just not going to volunteer for it. But those are probably the positions that are the most important for you directly in, in your community. Um, so what can you do? I would, number one, be sure that you want this because you cannot sell the dream to anybody if you can't even sell it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get the naysayers. You're going to go tell your, your sister that you're running for office and they're going to be like, are you sure that you run? Yeah. What are you going to do that's any better than anybody else? Yeah. And it's going to be hurtful. It's going to be, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to say, man, if I can't even get my sister on board, <laughs> then who's going to get behind me? Yeah. Well, your family is probably your worst critic. So <laughs> immediately know that your friends and your family are probably going to be the most doubtful people. Because they, they that's kind of just in their nature to question everything, to almost in a way, in their own way, they're trying to protect you from uh, launching something that you may not be able to, to accomplish or that you might get hurt on the way. Um, my grandmother was one of them. She, anytime that I was doing any social activism, she would always tell me, like, why do you do this? Like, why do you get so involved? And I've been an activist since I was 15. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just suffering for no reason. Just stay home. Don't worry about it. And, and she meant well by it, but yeah. that's not who I am. Um, so for me, organizing, um, get out there right now. What are you doing for your community? Are you helping out with the food bank? Um, are you standing with people at the picket line for labor uh, strikes? Mm -hmm. um, because those are the same people who are going to be there to support you, and they're going to be the ones that are going to be vouching for you, that mm -hmm. you stood at that picket line with them that you made sure that you were handing out uh, food vouchers for, for needy families during the holidays. Those are the things that you need to already be doing now because yeah. a policy is not the only way that you can affect change, you yeah. know? So um, I would say do whatever you can to help your community now. Do whatever you can to find programs that can help you uh, start launching your campaign. And, and immediately, once you have that under your belt, the easiest thing will be to tell somebody I'm going to run for office and the person sitting next to you is going to say, how can I help you? 
Um, mm -hmm. and, and really, if you have the right message, uh, a volunteer army is the easiest thing to come by. Of course, if you do start fundraising and uh, have enough money to pay uh, your staff, like, uh, do it because it's so important that people, especially now, that they know that they're, they're worth the, the money and that you're not just going to be using your volunteers. And once you're at a good place, you're going to fire them all and get mm -hmm. hired staff from elsewhere. And that happens in every single campaign. Um, and I think it's probably the worst. Uh, mm -hmm. thing that, that they could do to be completely frank with you but yeah. Uh, yeah you can build your own volunteer army just by talking about the issues and and asking mm -hmm. them what what can i do in that position that is the most important thing for you when did you get your first volunteer like um you started running and i'm sure you're excited like wow this person is here to support me when did that first happen i'm just curious like. Um, so for me, it was interesting. So I was pretty active in my community and mm -hmm. I held a forum to look for somebody who could run for Congress. Okay. So we could discuss uh, finding leaders in the community that could run for office. And while I did that, I had a few people say, well, why don't you run? Mm -hmm. We'll support you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one of the, the people that, I, that was very active. She was a retired woman. Um, asked me out for coffee one day and I said, sure. So I went out with her and she just pulls out the FEC forms and she's like, we need to file. Oh, you need wow. to file and you need to <laughs> run and I'm here for whatever you need. So that was my first volunteer. Awesome. Uh, I hadn't even decided to run yet, but, but if you have it within you, people will recognize it and, and they will be there for you. Wow, that's awesome. How do you keep volunteers motivated? You keep volunteers motivated by not um, well, number one, you have to be the person who is like, what is it, your hype man? Like, you yeah. gotta be your own hype man, okay. right? Okay. And you also gotta be the same hype man for everybody on your crew. Nice. If you are not the one who is the most uh, most spirited about it, about the position that you're gonna be running for, you really can't be looking at cynicism, you can't be looking at naysayers, you gotta just be running for you. Because every single person uh, is gonna have a different experience, but you're gonna still face the same kind of scrutiny from from the people around you. Somebody's always going to tell you no, or they're going to ask you like, hey, you're not doing that well. Why don't you drop out? You know, when you are just at the, uh, you're just building your momentum and those things that can be demoralizing. So uh, to keep your volunteers motivated, you have to remain motivated yourself. You have to be as hungry as, and, and as motivated as you ever were every single day. Um, and of course, uh, try to do volunteer events, you know, that are, are really just for relaxing. So uh, we would have a volunteer events where we would just hang out and have a beer and talk. And, um, and it wasn't just all about politics, uh, depending on like our my position, but we would just, since we were all political junkies, we would just talk about anything and everything. So uh, building that rapport with your team is going to be something that is going to keep your volunteers motivated. Nice. Thank you so much for that insight.